Yes. Um, earlier this fall, Stora Enz uh, had an inauguration for Package Innovation Center here at the head office in Helsinki. And I'm here with Timo Sokka, who is vice president and head of new business development and innovation and R&D at Stora Enz Consumer Board. Timo, what can you tell us a little bit about the background about this innovation center? Yeah, this uh, innovation center is a, is a, a bit of a longer development with uh, with Stu Renzo. And uh, we actually started developing the concept uh, about one and a half years ago. Uh, conducted a very thorough study with uh, with the help of consultants and, uh, and uh, came into uh, research results of, of having uh, a new type of uh, innovation center. And, and what is specific about this innovation center is uh, it's focused very much on the con uh, customer brand and consumer interaction. So what we are developing is a, is a joint development with our customers, our brands, and, and uh, bringing our best experts and our customers, brands, experts onto the same table and developing new ideas that we can we can grow into innovations. And how can you develop that? I mean, what kind of uh, equipment do you have here at the Innovation Center? We uh, we have uh, mostly uh, interactive tools uh, where we can run ideation workshops and uh, and uh, have a sort of a systematic systematic approach in in development joint development and and ru running those agendas that we have. Uh, we have a, a, a certain nice interactive tools here that we can use in the idea creation and uh, also we have a small laboratory here where we can, uh, we can do small scale prototyping and, and mock-ups for, for packaging. And how has this been received by the brand owners or customers? I mean, has there been a, a great interest so far? Yes, we uh, we actually well we had the inauguration uh, on the 27th of November, and uh, we had a lot of lot of our customers here, and they were very very excited. It was very well received, and uh, and uh, and also going forward, well we have already had quite a few workshops over the past few months, and 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 continue to have those starting next year, and uh, and. Uh, I must say that uh, it's it's getting busy in in this respect. <laughs> so this is it really indicates that uh, there is a need for this kind of innovation centers. Yes, definitely. It's 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 uh, it's something that uh, people are you know more and more starting to realize how beneficial this is for the for the for the customer or the brand for the brand. Uh, what can you say? But today, what is the, uh, let's say, two or three main topics that you're looking at today and when you have brand owners here? What are you working with today? Well, uh, if we look at our key development areas, we are talking about our flagship projects. So we are talking about the microfibrillated cellulose uh, developments within that area uh, comp comprise uh, predominantly uh, uh, source reduction as well as development of barriers and, and uh, MFC-based films. Uh, that is uh, in the in the arena of, of our key strategic intent of, of uh, uh, replacing plastics in the longer term. And when we, before we continue, when will we see that on the market? You think in a more definite way? Uh, we are at the moment uh, looking at the development uh, scope of within the next few years. It's difficult still to define the exact date because we are in the development process. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like I said, we have uh, two other uh, main main development areas. One being a barrier board, which comprises uh, dispersion barriers, new types of uh, of coatings into into the boards, and and also some bio barriers uh, development. And then we have the intelligent packaging, which is a uh, one of the hot topics nowadays of, of talking about added intelligence in the packaging for uh, brand enhancement, brand protection and, and the supply chain optimization. When you talk about barrier technologies, are we talking about, for example, nanotechnologies and so on? And what can we expect, you think, from uh, barrier technologies in the future? Uh, barriers are an area where we have uh, what a lot of different possibilities of, of looking at different types of, of uh, biopolymers, um, also looking at MFC as one sort of a barrier. And all, all, all around it's, it's 
working around the same topic of replacing plastics in packaging, of, of actually replacing uh, plastic barriers. And when it comes to the intelligent packaging, uh, what do you show the brand owners right now, for example? I mean, what, what kind of techniques? Uh, well, two big areas that we work on with our, our partners like NXP, uh, we, we look uh, uh, new ideas how to work with NFC technologies, with the brand, uh, brand, uh, brand enhancement, uh, consumer interaction, looking at the uh, possibilities, what we can develop around that. And, uh, and also RFID obviously is, is uh, interesting for us. We are developing that, but that is more uh, dependent on the, on the infrastructure development and, and maybe a bit more longer term development in, in that respect of actually going into, into fast moving consumer goods. So when we talk about intelligent packaging, the smartphone is very often involved. Yeah, it's, a, it's a one key development. Obviously, a smartphone is the infrastructure for NFC. And, and uh, besides having a, a direct link, uh, replacing QR codes with easier accessible NFC tags, we, we have uh, also possibilities of, of looking at uh, what, the, what is the developments around uh, payment systems and all that nowadays. Okay, Timo, thank you very much and you. good luck in the future. Thank you very much.